Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Digestion Diaries. I'm Dr. Jason Pikin, and what I want to talk about today is something called leaky gut. Now, if you've been searching around the internet for digestive issues, I'm sure you've come across the term leaky gut. It's kind of a disgusting term, uh, and it's really not a scientific term, but it's easier than, say, intestinal hyperpermeability syndrome. So who wants to say that? So let's just call it leaky gut, what it is. So first, what I want to give you is some background on what leaky gut is, and then I want to teach you three simple tricks, just three tricks, on how to get rid of it. So let's go first with the background. So what is it? Here's the explanation of leaky gut that I really like to use. When you eat something, the food is actually not inside your body. It's actually literally passing through this tube. You see your, your mouth, you can see as the opening of the tube, let's call it a hose. And then your other end, where you poop things out of, is the other end of the tube. So you're chewing up this food, hopefully it's food and not junk, and you're swallowing it, it's going down your esophagus into your stomach, and then it's going through your intestines, but basically, you haven't absorbed it into your body yet. What happens first is we have to chew it, break it down. Our acid, hopefully you have the right amount of stomach acid, and that's breaking down our foods further. And then, enzymes work to break down our food either, even further. You see, the whole first third of our digestive tract is really all about breaking down our food into small, tiny little particles so we can absorb it. All the while, it's just still passing through this tube. Hopefully you can see that through my hands right there. And so it's not inside our body yet. It's just getting further and further broken down into mushier, liquefied pieces. And then what happens is within that tube, there are these little projections, these little villi. And what they're doing is they're feeling and sensing everything that's passing by. And let's say they sense a little broccoli, and they say, oh, we want to absorb that. Well, broccoli is actually too big. So hopefully your body has broken down that broccoli into your body, sorry, has broken down that broccoli into its component parts. Little vitamins, amino acids, simple carbohydrates that can be absorbed for fuel, energy, and lots of different processes in our body. So you see we have to take this food, broccoli, hopefully you're eating some, and you're chewing it, you're breaking it down to smaller and smaller parts, and finally, these villi see these tiny little components of the broccoli, these micronutrients, and they say, yes, I want a piece of that, we should absorb it. And it's something called active transport. So if you can picture this tube, and hopefully you can see it, and then we turn it on its side so you can see it from the inside, what happens is they have to open and close, these gates have to open and close. I'll do it from the outside of the tube open and close, open and close, that's how the food passes into our body from our intestines. So what happens is when our body senses with those little villi that something is good for us, that we want it, we need to absorb it, the gates open and we let that in and then they close. And this is happening really, really quickly. So what's leaky gut? Well, leaky gut happens when those gates stay open longer. They're just hanging out there longer. Now, I'm really simplifying this, but literally this does happen. Those gates stay open too long. So now, besides your body absorbing the, the broccoli micronutrients like folic acid and some simple carbohydrates, what it's also allowing to come in are other things that you ate along with that broccoli. Let's say you, after the broccoli, you had some dessert and you had some Oreos. I don't know, there are a lot, a lot of good nutrients in Oreos. Well, maybe there's some carbohydrates and maybe you could use some of those carbohydrates, but there's a lot of things that we don't need. Oh, and by the way, um, right before you um, ate that broccoli, you also um, drank some soda with some chemicals in it. Uh, and you had a lolly top pop earlier that day with some blue dye number 40. Uh, I know it's not number 40, I forget the number of the blue dye. But basically when you have things other than food going through our body, then if those gates are open because you have a leaky gut, well then you're absorbing those things that we're not supposed to absorb. And let's say your upper digestive system wasn't really breaking down things as well as it could, as efficiently as it could. Maybe you were shoveling down your food and you weren't chewing. 
so the particles were too big. Maybe you don't have enough acid in your stomach. Maybe your gallbladder or your pancreas aren't secreting enough enzymes and you're not breaking down your food into its smallest particles. Then if you have a leaky gut, what's happening is you're allowing larger molecules to pass through that aren't supposed to be there. So the body is only supposed to be able to absorb these tiny, minuscule, little microscopic things. And if you have a leaky gut, meaning the gate is opening and closing too easily, you may be absorbing larger proteins. So now these things are circulating around your bloodstream. These things are not supposed to be there and some are supposed to be there. The things that are not supposed to be there, the immune system actually attacks them. And this is the main reason why leaky gut can lead to inflammation. And inflammation is good if you really want to heal something, but if you have a leaky gut and you're allowing these larger par particles of food, these toxins that are supposed to be passing through us to be absorbed into our body mistakenly, well then your inflammation could be rampant. It could be overabundant. It could be something called upregulated. That means the inflammation is going on all the time. And what can that do to our bodies? Well, it can cause anything from brain fog to muscle aches to joint pains. You see, the vast majority of people that come to see me because I am a chiropractor come to see me for chronic pain. Not because they you know, fell out of a car. Uh, I've done that, don't do that, it's really painful. Um, not because they fell down the stairs or lifted a piano and hurt themselves but because over the weeks, months, and years of life, they've developed these aches and they're generalized. They're not just in one spot, they have a few of them. And they're not going away even though they've tried to be treated. So one of the main things I look for in people that have chronic pain is leaky gut to find out if their digestive system has been broken down to the point where they're letting in these things that aren't supposed to be in their body and causing inflammation. That's the story of leaky gut. So what are the things that we can do about leaky gut? How do I wrap this up? Jason, uh, Dr. Pikin, help me. Well, the first thing is there's always three stresses, physical, chemical, emotional. So the physical side of leaky gut, there is little, literal stress around your diaphragm uh, that can be causing indigestion, meaning improper digestion. Your diaphragm is a muscle that does help you to breathe, but it also can impact the functioning of your stomach and it can cause a hiatal hernia, which can cause acid to escape, which causes a bunch of different chemical cascades that screws up your digestion. So if you literally feel around for just below your ribs, just where the ribs end right here, and crook your fingers, just like this, I'm hoping you, you can see them, and you get in there and you feel around for knots all around your diaphragm, and if you sense one, rub it, try not to tickle yourself, uh, but just rub these knots, and if you get a little bit of a release of tension, if you feel like one that's painful, and you rub it and you release it, you might feel lighter in this area right here. And there is a physical stress that's causing acid reflux, something, uh, sorry, yes, it could be causing acid reflux, but it could also be causing leaky gut. And if you relieve the physical tension for the body, the body always functions better. There is another physical problem that I don't think you can work on yourself, but it's a subluxation. A subluxation is a rather small misalignment of a bone, but it happens in an important spot in your spine. If your spine is misaligned to the point where it irritates the nervous system, you should be going to a chiropractor to release the stress from the nervous system to allow your body to heal. Because if those nerves that were being impacted were right up in through here in this middle of your spine, well, those nerves go directly into your stomach and again can cause the indigestion, the improper breakdown of your foods. And what I said before is if you're having these larger particles of foods passing through, being absorbed, that can irritate your stomach and your digestive tract. So uh, there are physical, chemical. Well, the best thing that you can do to heal a leaky gut after you develop it is do an elimination reintroduction diet. So the diet I use most often is a version of AI paleo, autoimmune paleo. And instead of explaining every little piece of it, at the bottom of this video, what I'm going to have in the notes is a link to my leaky gut PDF. I want to give that to you and it'll explain everything about what 
foods to eliminate, how to reintroduce them, how long to do it for, I have it all listed right there. But basically what you want to do, the general concept is this. You narrow your foods down to a very small grouping and you stay in that grouping of small limited healthy foods for two to four to six to eight to twelve weeks depending on how bad your problem is and then slowly you expand that list of foods. You reintroduce foods that you weren't eating before. Tend to, it tends to be that the foods you want to eliminate are grains, beans, dairy, eggs, soy, sugar. If you eliminate those foods from your life and you feel better, well, then you give your body some time to heal, a couple weeks, and then you start reintroducing the foods that you were eliminating. And again, scroll down to the show notes, and what I'm going to do is give you that PDF for free. And uh, if you have any other questions about it, please contact me. So we went, went through the physical stresses and how to fix some of them. We went through the chemistry stresses and what about emotional. It's always fascinating to me how large of an impact emotional stress has on our digestive system and healing leaky gut. So my number one recommendation for healing emotional stress, meditation. I know I said that with a little bit of energy, a little bit of zing there, but you got to meditate. What is meditation when you break it down to its simplest form? Focusing on one thing for as long as you can. It could be one thing, a mantra that you say. Om. Um, I have some words that I repeat over and over again that I learned in tra doing transcendental meditation. You can say peace. You can say love. You can focus on breathing. Just taking a deep breath in, holding it for a second, exhaling your breath out. And just think about the fact that you're breathing. Just focus on somebody's voice if you like a guided meditation. You can go on YouTube to some other people that are making videos and they've created tons of meditation um, tools that you can use. There are apps that can guide you through meditation, but basically what it means is you're just simply trying to focus on one thing and one thing only and not letting your mind wander. And when you're in a meditative state, your nervous system is in a more relaxed state and that helps you to digest. Literally, it helps you to digest. What else helps you besides meditation? Just breathe. Sometimes that's all we need to do is take a break and breathe. So if you really want to heal leaky gut, what you have to do is take time and, and breathe and relax, meditate. You need to find the right foods. Hopefully my leaky gut protocol uh, is going to be uh, something that, that's a tool that you can use. Click the link below. And look for the physical stresses that are in our body because if you're physically tight, if you're misaligned, if you need to get adjusted by a chiropractor, that can all prevent you from healing. So I hope these tips and tricks help you and I hope this video wasn't too long for you. If you have any more questions, let me know. Signing off, hope that helps. Have a great day.